Um, yeah, I'm Martin Kunde. I'm a geologist from the Danish Environmental Protection Agency. That's a big mouthful. I'll just say deeper from now on. Uh, and I'll uh, I'll be giving a presentation on what I called from data to decisions, empowering groundwater professionals with a QGIS plugin. So starting off here, I specifically is from the groundwater mapping unit in DEPA, and uh, we are responsible for the nationwide groundwater mapping of the water resource and uh, assessing the vulnerability and essentially giving the foundational knowledge to do groundwater management. And to do this, we use data and we use a lot of data. And of course, we all know this. We, the data people, got a constant headache because everybody needs data all the time and then you have to tweak this and uh, can you please extract this from the database and uh, uh, I need to tweak it. And that's why we thought, why not make the data from the databases more available to the generalist, the geologist and everybody so they could easily themselves get the data. And that's why we made this uh, QGIS plugin. It's called GKO. It's the abbreviation for the groundwater mapping unit in Danish, but data extractor. Very logical what it does, uh, at least initially. And then I've included why QGIS. This is the wrong crowd to persuade. Uh, <laughs> you already know it's uh, open source. We love that, fully customizable, and it handles everything we throw at it. So why anything else? And here is a rather chaotic <laughs> map. Uh, it's just some background. This is the Danish Jupiter database of all boreholes in Denmark, of which there are over 450,000. So that's a lot. And uh, this Jupiter database contains all the chemical data from all the groundwater wells, all the water level data, pump tests, gosh, everything from related to boreholes. So it's a lot. And uh, what you can do is uh, open this WebGIS application. You can see all your, your wells and you can make some filtrations and you can click on a well, open the well, you get the bore report, and you get lithology and you can access the chemistry and then you can click on, I want to see something about nitrate and then you get a time series. Super good for the public. Super extensive for the <laughs> groundwater professionals to work with. On the other hand, what was previously available was that you can go in and download an access database uh, for a large area and then you get it essentially from this access database. And then all of my colleagues were, gosh, how do I, how do I handle that? So instead to the plugin. Uh, and this is the interface of the plugin. It's super simple. Uh, there's an area of interest, essentially just a polygon of where do you want your data. It could be a municipality boundary or whatever. And then to make it as simple as possible, it's just, hmm, I want nitrate, then I check it off and export it to QGIS. And then it's already symbolized for you. Uh, so the, the generalist or the geologist doesn't have to go into well, how should I symbolize it and how, how do I go about that. It's already done beforehand and uh, you can see if it's red, it's above the threshold value and you can see the different shapes for, for the different aquifers. And essentially you can go about all these, you can check out pesticides, it gets loaded into the map view, super easy. And not as not as complex as previous. And uh, just the same here we have for the uh, extraction of water level data. And what we wanted here was to make SQL easy. <laughs> and uh, instead of people having to learn SQL and access the database and sort it, we thought, mm, why just not make it easily with a spin box? Uh, so here you can 
extract uh, water level data. You can set your your uh, time range. You can set, uh, I want at least three uh, water level data uh, points per borehole, and so on and so on. And then we avoid data overload because when you extract data, <laughs> there's water level data, it's chaotic and you might not need all of it. So why not just uh, say, ah, uh, perhaps we can uh, sort it. We only want from 2000 to 2024. And I want at least three water level measurements and the uh, drill should be, or the borehole should be at least 10 meters depth. And then you get it sorted beforehand. And you can easily just customize this yourself. Then we avoid data overload and we avoid headaches. The next result here is, uh, or the next feature is, uh, is our own database. And it's rather technical, but it's, it's just to show the simplicity of it. As you can see, what are the previous or the existing models in the area? What about uh, the, the aquifer thickness? And I know this is technical for non-geologists, but it's just to show the ease of which uh, we can uh, give all our colleagues uh, the up-to-date data that they need. The next result here is uh, we are also lucky in Denmark that we have made the work to make a national geological model where all the geological models of Denmark were essentially stitched together. And this gives us great opportunities. And sometimes in our line of work, we have to do cross sections of the underground to see what is inside. And to do this, we made a tool and you choose your model. Then you choose, do you want to include boreholes and from which distance do you want them projected in? And then you can make all these customizable changes to your cross section. But then essentially you just draw it with a line tool in the map view and then you get your profile. And this might seem excessive. This is all the different layers in the subsurface. And you can see the wells here on the boreholes. And inside the map view here, uh, your profile line is shown with a buffer around it. And when you drag your mouse across the, the cross section, it shows in red where you are. And uh, of course the wells are also plotted. Then you can click on a well and you can see the detailed lithology of it. And you can get a di direct link to the ball report if you want to look in closer. And it was just to make it so foolproof as possible. <laughs> the next example here is uh, the geological interpretation evaluation. And it's essentially just giving people some valuable JS tools. And uh, in this case, this is a very geological <laughs> example. But in this case, it's does the model fit the data? So is the yellow here sand? Does the boreholes say sand as well? And does the geophysical uh, soundings or measurements indicate sand? And to do this, we did a lot of variance assessment and, and uh, computations, but the result is just a simple uh, a 2D overview where the people or our colleagues can see, hmm, does the model fit the data here? And the next example here, this is our automatic figure generator, which allows the user to automatically generate all these standardized uh, maps or figures that we use. And when we start a mapping project, we do this way too long report with 40 maps and it's excessive and it takes 100 man hours to do this and why not automatize it? So you can import your layers, choose to save them locally if you'd like, generate your layouts and export your figures. And then you get all of these 40 figures, <laughs> uh, which is essentially just standardized. And then when you're done with that, you can and when it's done, then it's automatically just generates this word report. And you can see all of this people had to do manually. 
And now they can just do the technical assessments, look at the data, do the evaluations, you know, what they like, <laughs> the actual jobs. And we've attempted to do the same with the Atlas features. At the end of a mapping process, put in your result layers, and then do the, in this case, it's uh, the waterwork descriptions specific for each waterworks. And then you get all the data specific to, to, to the particular waterwork. And then it's just automatized in this atlas instead of people having to do it manually. And this is our future attempt to try to make our communication of our data and our results as streamlined as possible uh, and as easy. Uh, it both looks professional that it's always done the same, but it's 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 demanding task for people who are not familiar with with layouts and atlas and uh, and when it's automatized it's it's straightforward. The last example here I have is uh, a bit more specific, but uh, it's uh, GIS MCDA. What an abbreviation. <laughs> It's a multi-criteria decision analysis. And essentially what that is, is when you want to compare a lot of layers, a lot of parameters, you set up some criteria, smack them all together and get a simple result layer. So you can say, hmm, if this parameter is high, I wanted to give it, I want to give it a lot of points. And if this is below five, it should get maximum points and so on. So it's just a very simple click and choose interface for people to do this uh, GIS MCDA. Uh, so they choose uh, the area of interest, how many parameters, they choose which type of parameters, how should I give my points, should it be Boolean, true or false, should it be uh, value based, Does, do I want multiple criteria for this parameter or so on and so on. And then you go into the next window, you click your attributes, you set your, your parameters, and then all your layers are transformed to rasters, temporary raster files. And when you're done, you get the simple results layer indicating where all your criteria agree. And then when it's temporary raster files, all of these, it's easy. It takes two seconds to, to make a new iteration. So, uh, it's it's a good tool to look through large amounts of data and and try to find uh, connections that you you don't initially see. Yeah, that's it. Thank you for your attention. Excellent. <laughs> it's warm in here, right? Mm. Oh my god, <laughs> super hot. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, the nice nice talk. Also for keeping time. Mm -hmm. I see a question over here. So we can, um, is there any documentation so we can look at just your process for designing that? Uh, sadly, no. Uh, the The problem is we we are in the in the process of uh, giving this out to the public, but uh, at this point, there's no uh, available database for everybody to see. I mean, it's public, but you have to download the database. And and at this moment, it's cobbled up to our own uh, version of the of the Jupyter database and and so on. So at this moment, it's it's locked in our system. Uh, but uh, I mean, a bunch of the tools sh should just be out there, uh, and and we're looking. Uh, no, no, not yet. But but we're looking at uh, yeah, yeah, at at setting it out there. Yeah. What other questions do you guys have? Yep. Yeah, great presentation. Um, so I was curious, like, what all went into creating this plugin that seems very complex? Uh, was there, like, a team behind it? I mean, uh, initially, it was just a data extractor, and then it got <laughs> built upon. And we had a lot of processing algorithms but people didn't use them mm -hmm. because then they had to find the processing toolbox and they had to look over here and it was difficult. So in, in our line of work, we just found one place 
for everything. And then you can click the tabs, what you want, and, and, and do it and so on. And it was just, hey, I have a good idea on what could be easy. Okay, we'll implement it. Yeah. So it's <laughs> um, just a follow up question. Uh, I was curious to see your profile tool. It looked very hmm? well done. What did you use to create that? As uh, you say. So the it's I think it's just Matplotlib. Oh. So uh, it's rather simple. We're looking into uh, or we have already done it in PyQt graph, but uh, when the documentation on the profile. Uh, what's it called the elevation profile gets a little better would would love to implement that instead because mm-hmm. that would just be obvious why not use a native uh elevation profile yeah it's just when, when it got out I, I couldn't find the, the documentation for it okay any other questions yeah and could you comment on the like the whole development process, you already said some things. Mm-hmm. There were some scripts, some some processes that were already there. Yeah. But are you looking at like in the past ten years or so? You build up those kind of actions and then now all put them together. How how did it work out? Yeah. So oh, we had a, a bunch of it was all over the place. <laughs> there was some processing algorithms. There was some manually packed softwares that you could that the user should go on github and download the uh, and it didn't live it just went dead to die because people didn't use it uh so initially it was just can we combine it one place and it should be as simple as possible for for people to use and did you wrap it up in like one year you just put it together or two years or just yeah a, a year yeah i think okay yeah and, and do you have to some feedback from the users that they say like because i mean like yeah, kind of a similar it. similar pr- mm. process and then you always have the the feedback and eventually you have a tool where you think okay it's iterated enough to to be okay or yeah good enough yeah uh and the the, the more people that use it the the more feedback you get so uh, i at least had great experience with uh, combining it to one place because if people have to go and look everywhere it's it doesn't they don't they simply don't so so yeah great feedback uh and a lot of small tweaks and can we implement this specific feature and it's super straightforward yeah yeah thank you we have plenty of more time so don't be shy with the mm-hmm. questions well with questions um i have one yeah. um what file formats or databases or what do you use i mean the users just have the ma- the interface they click on something mm-hmm. what ends up in qgis is it postgres or do you, do you download files what's the data they get in qgis uh i mean it, it depends but it, generally it's just a, a temp file a, a temporary uh, scratch layer uh, that is loaded with the data and it's we uh, extract it from a, a Postgres database and then just uh, reform it to a data frame and put it in. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Last chance for questions. All right, then thank you again. Of course. You maybe know already there's yeah. some presents <laughs> for the present for the presenters. So Lovely. thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Nice talk. And another hand of applause for Martin Keys.